come to call righteous people and sinners to repentance. And if you can identify with some of these people in the Old Testament, then good, you have a Savior. If you don't think you need a Savior, you got problems. Uh, by the way, on Sunday morning, you'll hear the pastor say this this morning. If we say we have no sin, we lie to ourselves. The truth is not in us. Then the pastor listens. If there's a dead silence, he should say, go home. Because there's nothing here for you. It's like a, you know, a physician. You're an emergency room physician. What would he do if he walked into the emergency room? It was packed with people, right? And he goes up to the first guy and says, what's your problem? The guy says, nothing. I want to read the magazines. Walks up next and well, what's your problem? Oh, I don't have a TV to work. I thought I'd watch TV this afternoon. He'd say, get out of here. This is an emergency room. It is a hospital. You're taking up room. Go. Now the liturgy forces us whether we feel like it or not. And the minister says that we have no sins. And the congregation responds. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. He will lick the life on us and throw us out of here. That's not what God does. And an emergency room physician, if a guy's sitting there and his blood all over the place, he says, what's the matter with you? He says, I had a car accident. And the physician says, oh, I can't stand this side of blood and walks away. And he should be fired. He doesn't belong in that room, right? And if the minister of the church says to sinners, get out of here, you don't belong here. And I just want to comment a little foot on that. I want to put on that. I just visited a couple people in the last few weeks who haven't been in church for a while. You know why? Because they are having problems in their life. They're having marital problems, or they're having problems with their children, and they are afraid to come to church because... Got any ideas? People will look at them, and they don't feel like they belong. Isn't this a sad situation? Could you imagine, again, if I may reuse that hospital analogy of someone who just broke his arm or got to slice his leg by an ad with an axe or something, not wanting to go to the emergency room because uh, he doesn't want to mess up the place with blood on the floor. Hello, that is the purpose of a hospital. The purpose of the church is to resent it. Where have we ever come to this? We have to play games with each other and pretend on Sunday that we have no sins and act like we're perfect people. This is not the business of the church. And I don't know what to do about it. I think we ministers have perhaps contributed to the problem the way we preach sometimes. I'm not saying that's Pastor Johnson Johnson myself, but maybe we're a little guilty too. Giving the impression that the church is full of pious people. We all dress so nicely. Not that we shouldn't dress nice, it's not the issue. But uh, we have to make it clear to people that if you have sins, you belong here. That's the business of the church. I want to go through the rest of Jacob's prayer, which is going to be beautiful and very shocking in a sense. As he, he condemns Reuben, he condemns Simeon, he condemns Levi, and then he comes to Judah. What had Judah done? Slept with Tamar, his daughter-in-law. You expect that he's going to hammer Judah, but when he gets to Judah, the Hebrew is very dramatic. Yehuda, Ata, Ata means you. Judah, you are the one. We say, oh my gosh, what? <laughs> and then he gives a marvelous promise. Incredible. Talk about grace alone. Sola gratia. Boy, there it is. Let's close with the blessing. <coughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen.